fans, welcome to FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win from Radio Row here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Lisa Kearney getting you ready to bet Super Bowl 57 between the Chiefs and the Eagles. It is day two, and you know the team bringing the knowledge here. Former NFL wideout and Super Bowl champion James Jones in-house. We've got sports betting expert Jay Weaver, sports talk radio host Andrew Filipponi, all the usual suspects. Guys, <laughs> we are breaking down a bunch of fun Super Bowl bets on the board at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, hey, you guys ready to do this thing? Oh, yeah. Let's oh, do it. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, and also, by the way, Radio Row is really filling up here on yep. day two. It's starting to come A little in. quiet early in the week, yeah. and now it's hipping, hopping and hipping and all the Carrot things. Top is here. Carrot Top, Top is here. He was actually on this set uh, <laughs> with Pat McAfee, so you can check out his show. Guys, all along with, of course, us in Phoenix, our NFL expert Cole Wright joining us from Chicago to give us his unique take, as always. Ooh. Cole Wright, what's up? <laughs> He's like, I'm ready to go. Let's on. go. All right, we told you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we told you all week long we're bringing in some great guests to join us here on our set. Today we've got former Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb. We've got Lions Pro Bowl wide receiver Amonra St. Brown and dropping by. So get psyched for these guys. Some great conversations ahead. They were awesome. All right, we're ready to do this thing. More Ways to Win starts now. <laughs> All right, we started with the spread yesterday, so we're going to get to that in a few minutes. But today we're jumping out to uh, another popular prop bet, the total, you guys. We've been mm -hmm. talking about it. Kansas City and Philly are the first and third ranked scoring offenses, respectively. This total, again, 50 and a half. Dave, we're talking about some very high-powered offenses here, but we've also got a uh, very elite defenses. So how, when you look at the total sitting there at 50 and a half, how are you playing it? That's the thing. I, uh, I am not in the mindset that Philly has an elite defense because I don't think they've done it against good teams. Ooh. Their strength of schedule is 29th in the league. Ooh, and dang. I told James already on this show last week that the Chiefs are going to score 38 points in this game. Okay. So do the math. If the Chiefs get 38 points, we only need 13 from the <laughs> Eagles to get the 51. Oh, but it's going to be even higher scoring than that. It'll be like 38 27, somewhere in there. I think this game could get into the 60s. So if you, if you like the Chiefs like I do, you probably think it's the over. If you like the Eagles, you probably coordinate a parlay for it to go under. Is that what you would say, James? Yeah, well, I definitely think that you are crazy. I know you think that. The Kansas City Chiefs 38. score 38. I think it's going to be the other way around. I definitely think it's going to be over, you know, but I think you it's going to be the other way around. The Philadelphia Eagles going to score 38 points, okay. and the Kansas City Chiefs will be around maybe 17 to 21 points All in right. this ball game. I just don't see how. And I know you smiled at Dave. You're not going to smile. <laughs> I, I'm giving you the dagger eyes, you know? but you're used to that by now. But I just don't see how the Kansas City Chiefs are going to score consistently in this ball game, Pony. Mahomes against a Nelson. really good defense and a pass rush, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to be running like he was in Tampa. I'm telling you, I just don't believe in this offensive line is going to be able to protect him <laughs> the way they were able to to protect him last. At least it's two on two on set. James <laughs> and I agree, and you two. But you like the under, don't up. you? So I lean over, but slightly. Yeah. I'm a little over. What I, I you you keep pounding this drum that the Eagles have played the Sisters of the Poor <laughs> on yes. their way to the Super Bowl. They have the Steelers, uh, the Packers. Your two teams. How about the 49ers defense? Not any good. No. 49ers, 49ers defense. defense is good. How do the Eagles do offensively? I hope they score defense? points. I like the over. I'm just saying, but I, I kick it out of my head that you're saying <laughs> they basically about, got a yeah. bye week to the Super Bowl. Mm. They were the only division that put three teams in the divisional round of the playoffs. When there were eight teams left, there were three NFC East teams. That's, that tells me how bad the NFC is <laughs> so the, in general. The uh -huh. AFC, the Bills, mm. the Bengals. Mm. I mean, that's the best. So conference. regardless of what NFC team was in this game, you would take the Chiefs to beat them. It could have been the Niners. It could have been any team from the NFC. Yep. I was going to take the Bengals if the Bengals won, or I would take the Chiefs. Well, so you was going to take the Bengals. I was always going to be AFC. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what Cole, mm. Cole's thinking on this thing. It's t again, Cole, the total on the FanDuel Sportsbook right now, 50 and a half. How are you playing the total? Well, Lisa, Kansas City, as I'm sure you know, they won 66% of their games decided by three points or fewer. And they averaged 
uh, just a skosh under 29 points per game. And I think they're going to give themselves that little extra Super Bowl boost. They're going to go over 30 points. I think Philly, they're going to keep this one close as well. And uh, Kansas City, as we know, when it comes to defense, they allowed 23 or more at 10 times this year. So even though it'll be close, I, I'm leaning towards the over on this one, 58 points because 31-27, I'm looking to the future. You can't spell Miss Cleo without Cole. That's where I'm going. <laughs> hey, so this this has to, this That's is gonna have to be good for. this is gonna have to be a deal next year, all right? When we're all back here on this FanDuel show, at least eight weeks of the season, we have to watch the football games together because I'm starting to think that Cole I love that. and Dave don't watch the football games. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're saying that the Eagles are going to give up 30 plus points in yep. this football game, yep. and I don't know where they're getting that from. You know what? The X factor <laughs> in this game, and no one's talking about it. Is the head referee is Carl Shefford. Oh man. Is this his third or fourth Super Bowl? Uh Uh-huh. He was head of the crew that did the Chiefs gave two Super Bowl two years ago in Uh Tampa. Oh. His crew consistently Mm -hmm. Uh throws 16 flags a game. It's one and a half times more than the average crew Mm. all season long. We'll see if anybody moves the ball. Yes. Uh, yeah. Depends these, what flags are. If it's PIs, it's good. If it's holding, it's bad. See, I hate uh, that because that sends the message that the NFL, in order to get this game, if you hand out the most penalties, this is your reward. I don't want to no. over I don't want the I don't like to that decide either. the game, James. This will be his last Super Bowl if he comes out here and he's just throwing flags all over the yard and his crew is throwing flags all over the yard. This will be his last football game because you got to let the players play the game, especially in the Super Bowl. You know, you can't call a lot of the tickies tack stuff in the Super Bowl. I remember, like, a lot of these refs do other stuff, right? You know, some of them are teachers. Some of them are firefighters. A lot of them do different stuff. So I remember Coach Mike McCarthy used to come into every team meeting and he used to put the referees up there. This is what Bob does. This is what Lisa does. This is what Dave does. This is what Pony does. Before the game, before the game, go have a conversation with them. Let them know. So we used to go up to them. Hey, Lisa, I know you know you're a school teacher and all that. Hey, good to see you, all that. Hey, listen, they defense is going to hold. They DBs is going to hold, Lisa. That's fine. Don't throw the flag because I'm going to push off anyway. So just let us play. <laughs> I, I <love laughs> and, and don't worry. So, and, but, we, but I used to tell the refs that. You know what I mean? Is just so they know. Them up with their job? Just, just so they know. You don't got to call the ticky tack stuff. If he's holding me, I'm going to push off. I'm going to try to fight. Obviously, if it's blatant, I push off blatant or holding blatant. But don't call it. It was just a message. Don't call the ticky tack stuff. Let us let us play. Is that is that common for coaches oh, yeah. to do that? Oh, yeah. No, it's well, coaches, I don't know. But I'm like, assuming Mike McCarthy learned it from somebody that, yeah. you know, a coach. That, but, yeah, he used to do it every game. I love that. Yep. Let me go play the game. So you just let go me. up there, build that, and just say, hey, man, just let us play. He ain't yeah, call I like that. Stuff. Yeah. All right, I like this, too. Let's talk about some of the most popular. Popular prop bets on the board at the FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Uh, you can bet on the first touchdown scorer. There is a ton of plus money for every player. And look, Travis Kelsey is the favorite right now. James, should I come to you first on this one? <laughs> you want to come to me first on this one? Listen, the first touchdown score I have, my guy ain't even up here. Boston Scott. Woo! He is going to run one in. I already said that it's going to be a toss. It's going to be won by the Eagles. Uh, the Chiefs going to get the ball three and out. It's going to be a bomb to A.J. Brown. They're going to be in the red zone. Boston Scott scores the first And they're going to put uh, okay. Sanders on the bench and bring in Boston well, Scott? Well, Sanders will start it. They'll, the, you know, the I defense mean, for that from play. the Chiefs yeah. will come out, play some solid defense, and then maybe third down and short, they get a little Boston Scott. He scored one in the Giants game. Yep. He did. It wasn't – I don't and think it was the first one. I, I, like to, right. I like to pull from the past and see if history can repeat itself. So when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl uh-huh. not that long ago yeah. – the, the guy that scored their first touchdown was actually Patrick Mahomes. Right. The, there was a play, and especially if you can get a pass interference in the end zone, put it at the one-yard line, very good chance that he goes over the top or maybe like he did in that year, he ran an option to the right. Instead of pitching it, which he could have, yeah. I think it means something to get into the end zone when so you're you a quarterback. Te- you in the ankle early. I'm huh? taking Mahomes at plus 2,700. Okay. Huge odds, but I think he's got a very good chance to run one testing in early. That, testing that ankle early. It's huh? been two weeks, right? That's <laughs> not just, even a factor anymore, is it? I just feel like it's been too long for A.J. Brown. Mm. And I just think there's going to be a real emphasis in this game to go to him, especially if it's Jalen Watson, a seventh-round pick on him. Look at those odds right there, 9-1 to one on the guy that will be, in my opinion, the Eagles' number one target. Especially if it's a lot of man-to-man like the Chiefs have shown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Well, let's see what Cole has to say. Cole, you love chalk. 
<laughs> what you wow. got? Wow. Well, you know what? I feel like James <laughs> told up to the referee. And I'm not mad the about it either. Printing business. Yeah, with, with that shirt that he has on. <laughs> uh, well, it, well, either way, I'm going to give you a history saying. lesson because 18 years ago, yesterday, February 6, 2005, LJ Smith, he got the scoring started with a connection from a guy that's going to be on the show in just a little bit, Donovan McNabb. Eagles, Patriots, Super Bowl 39. Now, Smith. He spent his collegiate days in Piscataway, New Jersey, which is, oh, by the way, the home of Rutgers University. Who went there? Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco, he's going to look to be the 14th <laughs> Scarlet Knight to earn himself a Super Bowl ring and just the second Scarlet Knight to score a Super Bowl touchdown. Yeah, 18 years. Yeah, th that's been a long time, so we're going to see it. Plus 900, that's a good return on investment. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but like I showed you, I had two watches on. I always know what time it is. We got to mail him a Pacheco yeah, jersey. Cole, I know. Cole, he's got to wear one on the show. Cole, I know the wife is here, but she can't leave you at home by yourself anymore. <laughs> you came on the show and said 18 years ago. <laughs> hey, 18 hey, years ago. Charlotte Knight scored the first touchdown in the Super Bowl, so why not 18 years from now? Let's go. <laughs> We're going to run this clip back. That's a deep happens. dive research-wise. No oh, doubt. Man. Uh, one of the really fun things about betting the Super Bowl, you know this, there are a ton of unique bets that you can play that are really special for the big game. You're not going to get them all season long, so we're going to hit a few of those right now. We're going to get right to it. And, Pony, this first one is for you. Team with the most net yards in the game. Let's open it up. What mm. do you think? I, I always find myself wanting to go with uh, better odds. So in this case, it's Kansas City. Mm. But I can't. <laughs> I really can't. I, Chris Jones is going to have to have the game of his life yeah. in order to slow down this Eagles offense. And I'm not saying he can't. And I'm not saying I'm a tiny bit worried about Hurts' shoulder injury and the lack of chemistry with the wide receivers. But, no, I'm convinced the Eagles are going to have close to 500 total yards. Ooh. James, I'm actually Ooh. curious. I, I'm, you brought up something that I've actually wondered about. Mm. Everybody is focusing on Patrick Mahomes' ankle, the high ankle sprain. It yeah. takes usually, you know, six weeks at least. Yeah. But, but when you look at Jalen Hurts and the shoulder, he's yeah. coming back through that. How much do you think the shoulder is playing a factor now? Well, so this is different, right? So I, we both don't know how healthy Patrick is. We both don't know how healthy uh, Jalen Hurts is. But the shoulder is different, right? Because the shoulder, you can shoot, right? So if Jalen is feeling... 80% and he's feeling really good. You can shoot that shot. That shot they bring that out shot, is so that, big, James. And, and, and it's going to be perfect. Adrenaline, he take that shot, he ain't going to feel nothing until that game is over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, with Patty, you can't shoot an ankle. And with these ankles, they linger so long. Like, it can be one play. Fletcher Cox could come up the middle and grab him by the ankle and, and roll and boom, that's just re-aggravated and it feel like when he first did it. So that's the scary part about the ankle. Jalen hurts his shoulder. I'm, I'm fine with that because I can shoot it. The only reason way I get scared of that is if they fall on it the same way he hurt it. You know what I mean? So I'm not necessarily worried about that. I'm more worried about Patty Mahomes' ankle because at any point in the game, like – you can roll that thing, twist that thing, and it's back to when it first started. And you can't take nothing to really make that go away. I was just curious about, you know, yeah. how much we're making of these injuries yeah. and really where you stand on that. Um, all right, I got another prop bet, and this one is for you, Dave. We're going over under three and a half yards gained on the first offensive play of the game. Over or under? Uh, it's going over because over no well. matter who gets the ball, uh. if it's the Chiefs, it'll be an eight-yard pass to Kelsey. Uh. And if it's the <laughs> Eagles, it'll be a five-yard run by Sanders. So I think either way, I see – unless it's an incompletion, it's going over. You think I'm the glad Eagles are going to average five yards a carry and lose the game? It's just not about average yards per carry. It's the first play of the I'm game. I'm saying it seems like you're anticipating the Eagles being able to run the ball effectively. Yeah. In I'm glad you only went, on the I'm, first play. I'm glad you went with a pass for Kansas City though to Kelsey. Because Eight yard pass. If the first play of the game is a run for the Chiefs, it's no, probably going to be negative. I could think too. the Eagles are going to run it. <laughs> if it's to Pacheco, it's why we play the game. In his living room, it's probably going to be negative two yards with that D line amped up coming through there. Let me ask you yeah. this, JJ. Okay, another. Uh, you can bet this yeah. on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. What will happen first in the game, a sack or a touchdown? Ooh. 
Whoa. It's going to be a sack. It is. Because the Chiefs is going to get the Chris ball Jones first. Is the Chiefs there. is going to get the ball first. It's going to be about third and seven. You know what I mean? Philly fans going to be rocking in there, and somebody's coming through there, and they're going to get after Patty Mahomes and get a sack and force a punt. My, my nerdiness pulled play by play for the last four Super Bowls. Yeah. It's been a sack oh. first before a touchdown. And these are the two Just top so you know. Yeah, that's because they You're amped right. up and ready to go. Now, Eagles, 70 yeah. sacks in the regular season. We've talked about this. The first in the league by far. Second team, 55 sacks as the Chiefs. But those 70, again, yeah. tied for most in NFL history. How many, sacks did, sacks. How many sacks did uh, Chris Jones have this season? 15 and a half. Yeah. That's all? Because I truly believe that we ain't talked about it enough, and I know we got to go to break, but I want this, like, this can go either way. Chris Jones can either be dominant or Chris Jones' name might not be called in this game. Would you move him With around? With Travis Kelsey and the guys that are up front. Absolutely. I think you have to move him Me around too. because you can't leave him in front of the Hall of Famer Travis Kelsey. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, all Jason, game, Kelsey. Jason Kelsey all game long. Like, that's going to be a battle. Jason Kelsey don't give up sacks. And then you don't really want to put him out there with Lane Johnson. Although he's got the Yeah, but Lane hernia. Johnson don't give up sacks. So I would move him on the other side, but this is going to be a big key in the game. Okay, you know how much I love Chris Jones. Yeah. Also, MVP odds right now, 40 to 1, just mm. saying. He led all defensive tackles with pass rush yes. success rate at 21-plus percent. He but is this dominant. is the thing about him. Yeah. On more than 65% of the the plays, he was double teamed, yep. which doesn't even get yep. talked about. Yep. So to have that pass rush success rate That's and still saying. do that, That's which led saying. the league, 60, it was 60, um, God, I have the percentage. It was a massive percentage that he was double teamed, and he just still did the and, business. And that is what I'm saying. And if Travis Kelsey is good, I mean, if Jason Kelsey, as good as he is, can slow him down, whew, this defense is in big, big trouble. We'll see. <laughs> All right, great stuff by these guys. Uh, sorry about James here, guys. Uh, just, just I'm going to apologize now. Uh, hey, coming up, we have plenty more for you here on Fatal TV's More Ways to Win. But first, I got to tell you about the most anticipated kick of Super Bowl Sunday. It's FanDuel's Kick of Destiny. It's for $10 million. I know you've heard all about it. That's right. Rob Gronkowski will attempt a field goal live in the third quarter of the Super Bowl, and you can get a piece of the $10 million in bonus bets. Just place a wager of $5 or more on Super Bowl 57 before kickoff, and you'll receive a bonus if Gronk kicks the field goal and makes good on the kick of destiny. Now, it does not matter if you're new to FanDuel or already with us. Everyone is eligible to play, so jump on it. Gronk kicks, you win. It is as simple as that. Limit one per person and go ahead and cheer on Gronk in the third quarter as he goes for glory and $10 million for FanDuel betters. FanDuel TV is more ways to win live at the Super Bowl and coming to you here from Radio Row. Thanks for hanging with us up next. Former Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb joining us right here on this set. We're going to ask the Eagles icon to break down this historic quarterback matchup that's coming up next. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to day two here on Radio Row. You are watching More Ways to Win, and we are coming in hot with some star power as we start this show off again. Joining you from Super Bowl 57, getting you ready for the Chiefs and Eagles. We're going to break down the game. We got props. We got everything you need to know to get you ready to bet Super Bowl Sunday. But you see who's sitting here to my uh, to my left, that is, uh, TV, right? Uh, former Philadelphia Eagles quarterback, Mr. Donovan McNabb on set. Well, hello, you. You. hello. Everybody, thank you. Standing ovation, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we uh, we've been talking so much uh, offset about about the matchups, about what you're up to, about what you're doing here this week. Right. So much to get to, so we're gonna get right to it. But um, I'm gonna ask you about the game. I'm gonna ask you about your thoughts on everything in the matchups. Of course, the quarterbacks, lots to discuss there. But tell everybody what you've been up to these days. Well, just staying busy. I mean, I think uh, you know James can speak of it. When you're in weather like this, it, it's active. <laughs> it's active with the kids. Kids are playing football all year round. I'm training quarterbacks. Um, I'm coaching girls softball. Um, you know, I started a club organization out here with I, in which I coach two teams, 12U and 14U, travel softball. My kids are all involved in sports, so I'm traveling with them. Uh, being trying to be dad and coach at the same time. <laughs> 
But more importantly, I get a chance to spend a lot of time with family, and that's something that I definitely enjoy. All right, so we're here at Radio Row. Everybody's getting prepped for the Super Bowl. Right. Obviously, you took the Eagles to the Super Bowl back in 05. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked James this exact same question. I love <laughs> getting your answers because I know that such emotion comes with this week and the preps and what yeah. it was like. What are your memories of your experience back then? Well, remember, we had made it to conference titles three straight years, and so we finally felt like we got over the hump. Mm -hmm. And to get over that hump, was something that was memorable because, you know, it was something that I dreamed of. You know, our first NFC Championship game was against the, the St. Louis Rams at that particular time. And to play against Marshall Falk and, and Kurt Warner, Ooh. those guys, I felt like we had them. We had them at halftime. Yeah. I went in at halftime, and I, I just felt like I could taste at that time, Louisiana, to where the Super Bowl yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, I, I was just kind of in my mind <laughs> thinking, you're going to give me a shrimp po' boy sandwich. <laughs> I, was, I was already yeah. ready. Uh, and obviously, in the second half, it was a lot different. And then the second time around, it was just kind of like, hey, I, we've been here. We know what we have to do. Uh, but we weren't able to get it done. And I think that's something that's overlooked when it comes to teams that make it to this far because of the grind and the struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone talks about the regular season. The regular season to us meant nothing because it was about how far we can go. Mm -hmm. And so to get to the Super Bowl finally – I remember landing in Jacksonville and just looking out of the window, and all I remembered was videos of people who made it with, with their video cameras and, you know, just the hoopla, the fans outside. And we got off and all had video cameras and just recording, and it was kind of a breath of fresh air to get off that plane and know we're here at the Super Bowl. Yeah. But then the, the long media day, which yeah. those guys went through it yesterday, was the worst. Well, no it doubt. was cold in Jacksonville. <laughs> we were out there for about four hours. People were asking silly questions. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, what does this have to do with football? Yeah. And it takes the excitement away mm -hmm. until you get to practice. Uh, and the game, really, to be honest with you, was for me, it's always been just an opportunity to have fun. The game to us was played in the week. And we had a great week of practice. I thought we were going to come out outstanding. We played a great game. We just weren't able to, to win the game. But more importantly, the excitement of getting there and playing in the game is something I will never forget. Uh, Donovan, you're, a, you're an icon for the Eagles as far as quarterbacks go. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts. Um, can he get to that level, or what do you see in him that maybe some of the same traits that you had as a QB? The, the funny thing is it's a similar path in which, which I was on, but I think something that people tend to forget was he was drafted in the second round when no one expected him to be drafted in the second round. No one even thought he was worthy of being a second-round pick. Uh, and then his, his rookie year, everyone thought Carson was the guy. Why are we wasting the pick on this guy when the main thing was Carson had been hurt a lot. You need a quarterback that can come in and, and make plays for you when need be. But he took the pressure on himself to put extra time and effort to get himself better. And I think what helped him was the fact that he got out of the, the Alabama bubble went over to Oklahoma and learned out of Lincoln Riley, was able to go in more of a spread offense, throwing the football, and, and then getting to the NFL was just another opportunity to get better and better. So for Jalen, this is a perfect scenario for him uh, of where he started to get himself in this position. And I'll tell you one thing that people won't talk about. Um, he's up for a contract. And he's up for a contract with Joe Burrow and oh. Justin Herbert and all these guys. So he wins this Super Bowl. Yeah. We're going to be talking 30, yeah. 40 million. Speaking, speaking of that, when you talk JoJo Burrow, everybody, you know, instantly thinks next Joe Montana, Tom no, no, Brady. No. no, no, I'm just saying, right? Yeah. So for me, you, you are a big mentor to Jalen Hurts. Right. From this year, from, from last year to this year, what, what's the biggest thing that you've seen really change in his game to really elevate his game to turn him into the quarterback he is right now? Understanding how to play with poise in the pocket. Uh, as you see, it's a comfort level when you have a reliable weapon on the outside. Knowing that A.J. Brown came in, Devontae Smith was already yeah. emerging. <clears throat> now, Dallas Geider is, is becoming one of those tight end you guys as, as their fraternity now. Yeah. Uh, but he's a, he's a Kittles. He's a Kelsey. Uh, he's, he's Waller, like one of those guys. Yeah. And then Miles Sanders game evolving. So now when you have those pieces mm -hmm. around you, that sitting in the pocket level where I can check it down, I can go to my second, third read, I still have time, he's now starting to get comfortable in that sense. And so the progression of a quarterback is 
seeing a little bit of how fast it is in your first year. Your second year, you're starting to see the field a little bit more. Your third year, it's now I can make this pass on time. I can let the ball go before he comes out of his mm -hmm. break. Your fourth year, all of a sudden, everything yeah. starts to flow. And so he's now in his third season, and he's playing the way you would think those other guys would play. And he's put himself on that same wavelength. So you're putting him in because everybody ain't putting him in the category with Joe Burrow and Josh Allen and the boys. Just just keeping it 100. So you bet you saying he so in that category. Patty Mahomes. Mahomes. So you putting so him in that in that category. So everyone wants to go in tiers. Yeah. I don't go in tiers because you win, you measure quarterbacks by wins and losses. And so when you look at those quarterbacks that are in that class of winning quarterbacks. I would put him in that tier with the Patrick Mahomes, the Joe Burrows, and what we see. I don't know if I can go as far as putting Justin Herbert in that category right now because Justin hasn't won in the playoffs. And so it, it says something to me of where he's at and the trajectory he's on because if we're going to start talking a little bit Joe Burrow in that sense of whatever, we got to start now moving him in that category where it's like that second tier, if they want to call it with Patrick Mahomes at the top. This is surreal to me because you were my favorite player growing up. My first jersey <laughs> was your number five Syracuse jersey. Syracuse. Donovan. I'm a Syracuse guy. I, Does that I, make us feel old? You know what I'm saying? Donovan. You, I, not me, don't no. <laughs> You see how I put us? <laughs> us? Donovan, I stormed the field the first time I broke the law. At Virginia Tech? Virginia Tech. Mm. Steven Brominski. I was on the field as a 12-year-old. Thrill of a lifetime. Deep through the age. Yeah, I tipped my cap. That was one of the great I games. appreciate that, and that was memorable because my mom <laughs> Actually jumped over the rail uh, with I was Bob right Conrad's there with mom. Pony was and right got on there, the field. Right there with I got I'm Kevin like, Johnson's gloves, Donovan. I'm like, man, mom, mom showed a little bit of athleticism <laughs> getting over there. Where you but, think you got it from? You know she already. I mean, you, you know, <laughs> she'll let you know too. One hundred percent. But it's funny you bring that up because the journey, the path. Yeah. You know, we talk Jalen Hurts. It's like coming from the Syracuse offense where we ran the option early on. We started to open the offense up my junior senior year, getting drafted second overall. Where People were like, oh, boo, you know. Yeah. And now the journey each and every year of getting better and getting comfortable in the pocket, and that's where I see Jalen. That's exactly yeah. where I see Jalen and continuing to grow. Now, the issue a lot of times, and you can talk about this, you make the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. that following year, everyone thinks they're a star. You know, all of a sudden, guys got websites. Yeah. Now, now with social media being yeah. big, everybody's all on social yeah. media promoting something. Can they continue to stay focused? Yeah in the next year going forward. But that's what I think is different about Jalen. Well, I'm not saying him. No, 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 but I'm just I'm saying about everybody even for else the around. team, like he's such yes. a great leader. Yes. Like y'all don't read y'all press clippings, bro. We ain't done nothing. Even after we won the Super Bowl or if mm -hmm. they do win, like that's just how he built. But that's his intent. Yeah. That's another part that no one wants to talk about mm -hmm. because we want to highlight that for other people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to him being able to galvanize the troops – He's got everybody in that locker room on one accord. Mm -hmm. Hey, we won the NFC Championship. That's great, but we're not done. Mm -hmm. Like, that's something to be said. Yeah. We're going to talk going back to both quarterbacks because it's, an, it's Sunday's historic in right. a couple of different ways, right? It's right. the youngest combined age of quarterbacks to start in a Super Bowl. Right. Jalen sitting there at 24, Patty Mahomes 27. These are kids when we yeah. talk about feeling old, right? Yeah. It's also the first time we'll see two black quarterbacks starting and playing against each other in right. the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, uh, all the different networks are putting montages together and, and graphics and your face is right there and a great representation of, of quarterbacks who've done amazing things right. in this league. So I would love your take on the history we're about to see on Sunday. Well, you know, I, I look at it in the sense of where we are as far as sports with the youth. I won't go so much of this particular game with these two individuals, but what it does, it it creates a little bit of of anxiousness and as it creates a, a little bit of joy for middle school quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. It creates that I can't, yes, I can, from high school quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. It creates the, I'm going to put some extra time in, watch some extra film, work on my craft. This can happen from college quarterbacks um, because it, it opens the door of no longer of you're not smart enough, you're not big enough, you're, you're, you're not accurate enough. 
Uh, well, you come from a option offense, mm -hmm. uh, so you're not going to be able to, to learn how to read the field from a spread offense. Because what we're seeing now is we're seeing those opportunities being granted. Because I had this conversation in the ACC uh, award ceremony, and I said um, every college team has one of us. And when I say one of us, that means an athletic quarterback who can not only use his legs but also can read the field and throw the ball with accuracy. Every recruiter in college goes out to recruit a Donovan McNabb or a Jalen Hurts or Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And so the opportunity will be given as we continue to go along, but we have to talk about it more so it becomes more of a routine thing instead of a shock. If you could see it, you know, I can do it. There you can go. Go out and do it. There you go. Uh, you and I are going to be back together on Friday. Yes. I'm hosting the FanDuel party. Okay. You are going to be facing off uh, in the uh, Connect Four Basketball Challenge, the oh, Celebrity shit. Challenge. There's some bricks. Uh, 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 right. Uh, <laughs> Kate, Kate Kate He's a dual threat guy. He played Kyle Tooch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank. I'm so glad you sit on because I was waiting on James to make a comment. It's okay. Hey, <laughs> the jump shot stays. I'm trying to figure out. I'm really trying to figure out how I wasn't in that, Lisa. See. You ain't, you ain't seen my jump shot yet. I'm flicking, <laughs> <laughs> I'm flicking a wrist. Yeah. <laughs> you should have teed up to, to yeah. go against uh, something. Hey, no, 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 you don't want to do that. You, you no don't, no, listen, no doubt. I, don't, listen, don't, don't let the size fool you. The jump shot stays wet. Okay. It stays wet. I'm telling you, I'm the Steph Curry before Steph Curry. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Donovan McNabb, everybody. He's here with us on our More Ways to Win set. He's going to be back with us for the FanDuel party on Friday night. You're the best. Thanks for being Thank here. Thanks for having me. I really Insight. appreciate it. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Great insight there from Donovan McManad. We have another great guest coming up later on the More Ways to Win show. Pro Bowl wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown will be right here with us on set. We're asking the Detroit Lion for his thoughts on this Super Bowl matchup. And, of course, we'll be getting his big winner. That's Pro Bowl wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown coming up on More Ways to Win in just a few minutes. And we're going to be here all week long. We've been saying this all week already with all the usual stuff. So we got jokes, bets, laughs, the whole thing. Yes, more ways to win coming to you from Super Bowl all week long, leading you right up to kickoff on Sunday. Check out the show times. We put together a very fancy graphic to show you exactly when and where to find us. So make sure to check us out each day on FanDuel TV for great betting content, special appearances from current and former players. Here all week, everybody. We'll be right back after a quick break. Welcome back to Fatal TV's More Ways to Win hanging all week long here on Radio Row in Phoenix, Arizona. We're getting you ready to bet Super Bowl 57 and the line on this one has been holding. Eagles still giving one and a half to Kansas City. My Chiefs, this matchup features the youngest combined age of quarterbacks in Super Bowl history. Both Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes have proven they can absolutely thrive under pressure. Guys, this is a tight window sitting there at one and a half. Let's go ahead and bet this spread. Dave, you're up first. What you got? Yeah, so these guys keep talking about the fact that the Chiefs are not going to win the game and the reason that they're not is because their defense isn't going to be able to stop what the Eagles are going to do on the ground but when you look at the Chiefs defense against the rush and keep in mind the Eagles scored four touchdowns on the ground mm -hmm. in their last game yeah. but the Eagles have allowed the sixth least amount of touchdowns on the I mean sorry the Chiefs defense has allowed the sixth least amount of touchdowns on the ground so yeah. it hasn't been that easy to get it in the end zone on the ground against the Chiefs so I'm confident that the Eagles are not going to get 500 yards of, of total offense and that the Chiefs defense is going to step up their game in this one. We've seen some games this year where they've been really bad, but we've seen some games where their defense has really surprised some people, and I have confidence that they can keep Philly to maybe somewhere in the high 200s as far as total yards, not 500. Go ahead, James. Just go, J.J. Oh. Oh, the, the only thing that scares me, and I'm a fan of this Chiefs defense. I'm a fan of Chris Jones getting after the passer. Those young cornerbacks, they've been forced to play man-to-man -man coverage, and they have done really, really well. You know, when they got to make a play, they make a play. Whether it's a tackle, whether it's an interception, they make the play. You just haven't dealt with a guy like Jalen Hurts that's able to utilize his legs. I was watching TV last night before I went to bed, and they were showing – they were showing some run plays of the Niners game. And 
Fred Warner was lost. And he was lost at the middle linebacker because when they run the read option, he frozen because is he going to keep it? Or is he going to hand it? And he's and a that, great player. And he's a great player. And that split second, it's a handoff, Miles Sanders gone. Or he's keeping it. Tough. You know, I think for me, we know what Steve Spagnuolo, the Chiefs defensive coordinator, is. He wants to get pressure with yeah. four. He want, doesn't want to blitz. He wants to have the defensive line get there like he did That's with the Giants yep. against the Patriots when they were undefeated in Super Bowl 42. So if that doesn't work... If the Eagles' offensive line, which I think is one of the best in the league, yeah. if they dominate that matchup, I think they'll easily cover I want to know one and a half. I want to. I like an alternate get, spread up to nine and yeah. a half. At least I want to know if That's we could right, get this that. this stat to where somebody rushing four on the Eagles' offensive line and they got some sacks. I got to get to Cole. Cole, get in here. It's the line sitting there at one and a half. What are you thinking about this Chiefs Eagles matchup in that spread? Well, Kansas City, their defense, as we've seen, they usually play to the competition. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Hopefully for Andy Reid and company, it will be a good thing because uh, the close games, that's what Patrick Mahomes and company do in the playoffs. Their last four contests in the postseason, uh, one score ball games. And uh, like we said earlier, Kansas City, they allowed 23 or more points 10 times this season. They're going to make it 11 times, but it won't matter because they're going to be the better team offensively. 10-3 and three in the playoffs, Patrick Mahomes is. He's going to lock up that 11th postseason W. He'd be the best to do it under the age of 27 years old, first six seasons. So I'm going with uh, Kansas City covering this one. There you go. And listen to a pony. Hey, Steve Spagnuolo has a system. Every better also has a system to place bets. Thanks, guys. We want to remind you at home to make FanDuel's responsible gaming tools a key part of of yours. To learn more about time, wager, and deposit limits, visit FanDuel.com slash play well. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. We will be back after a quick break. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to More Ways to Win here from Radio Row, getting you ready for Super Bowl 57 here in Phoenix, Arizona. We're breaking down the big game. We're getting to everything you need to know. But right now, I want to welcome in a big-time baller and special guest to the More Ways to Win set Pro Bowl Lions wide receiver Amon Ra St. Brown joining us. Amon Ra, awesome to have you with us. <laughs> um, of course, we're going to get to your pick of the game and break right. down the matchup and all that good stuff. Yeah. But um, you had a big weekend. Uh -huh. Congratulations on your Pro Bowl nod. You're captain. Mm. Um, you won the best cash competition. Yep. Take us through the weekend. How was it? It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was more relaxed than I thought it would be. Uh, you know, I got in on a Tuesday, Tuesday night. Game wasn't until Sunday, so, um, you know, first few few days, didn't do much. Uh, did the best catch on Wednesday, did the flip in the pool. That was fun. Um, you know, kind of cold in Vegas, but it, it is what it is. Um, and then won that competition to go to the best catch finals on Sunday. Um, we had a little practice walkthrough on Saturday um, with the, you know, the wristband, the plays and whatnot. And then um, Sunday was, you know, the flag game. Family was there. Friends were there. Um, did the best catch thing. You know, won that, obviously. Stefan didn't really catch any ball, so it wasn't really, you know, a competition. But <laughs> if he would have caught some, I feel like it would have been more, you know, more even. But it was a lot of fun uh, to be out there with all the guys, you know, all the top dogs, um, just to, you know, run some routes. Um, haven't played flag in a long time since I was a kid. So, you know, I did the seven on seven in high school and whatnot, but haven't played flag in a long time. So it was, it was a lot of fun. But that's, that's great because I think there was a lot of question marks. James, you and I talked about it as well. Like, well, this is such a departure from – real football like this flag is not football mm -hmm. it's a completely different game so it's great to say that the players had a lot of fun what's right. your like one biggest memory greatest memory that came out of the weekend oh that's a good question um i would say my favorite memory um i would say just being around all the guys um a lot of the guys that maybe you know i watched when i was a kid growing up uh some of the guys that came in with me um Guys that, you know, you watch around the league. You don't get to play every team every year. So there's some guys that, you know, I never got to watch play. So to, to be all out there at, on the field at the same time was a lot of fun, definitely. But your Pete Davidson tattoo, you'll stick with <laughs> you forever. <laughs> Tell me that's not real. That's off now. It's gone, yeah. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, Thank you. Well played. Awesome. Yep. Congratulations Thank again. you so much. I so know Pony's got a question. One of the subplots is that it's a Kelsey Bowl. Right. Mm. You've got brothers in the Super Bowl. And you've got brothers who are wide receivers and great football players. Could you imagine getting to this spot, winner take all, and it's you against one of your brothers? What would that be like for you and your family? 
uh, I feel like that would be the ultimate celebration. You know, when, we, when I play against my brother every year, you know, I'm lucky enough to play him twice since he's in my right. division. Um, all my family comes out. Everyone, you know, comes and watches because as kids, you know, growing up, to be in the NFL at the same time, play each other is always, it's always been like a dream. And so when I play my brother, it's always super fun. I always have a lot of fun. You know, we go to dinner the night before and whatnot. So I can't imagine being in a Super Bowl, the biggest game of your life, playing against your brother. I know the Kelsey brothers are having the time of their life and, you know, they deserve it. Two awesome players, but it would be, it would be the, the pinnacle of everything for me. Now, when they said you was coming on the show, I, I was about to pull myself from the show because, you know, you <laughs> put my Packers out of the playoffs, man, going in Lambeau Field beating us, you know what I mean? But congrats. But I want, I got two little boys, right? Okay. They're 9 and 11. And if both of them were playing in the Super Bowl against each other, I know who I would want to win. <laughs> oh. I love them the right. same. I do. Right. <laughs> but I know my oldest can handle it a little better. He'll uh -huh. go up to his little brother and he'll say, little bro, congrats, man. Right. I'm happy for you. You know what I mean? Keep that jersey so we can exchange. Right. My youngest son, he going to run off and say, F everybody. <laughs> 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 so I know I want to win. Who would handle it better um, out of the brothers? Who Like, I know you competitor. You right. going to be in the game. You gonna right. want to win, but who you think would handle it better? Shoot, I would like to say he would handle it better. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I mean I feel like we'd both handle it pretty well. Um, but you know, I'm super competitive, like your youngest son. Um, if I'm in the Super Bowl, I, I gotta win it. Yeah. I have to, especially against my brother. But you know, I have the nod of over him right now in in the head to head. So um I would feel like I feel like he would handle it better than me, but you never know. He's also super competitive. He hates losing. Also. And real quick, you know, you you got a quarterback in Jared Goff over there, and you still got quarterback talks out there. You know, right. you hear, hey, is the Lions going to draft one? They going to bring one in in free agency? Is Jared Goff the guy that can get y'all to this game? He's the guy. I mean, you. I don't know if you watched last year, um, but I feel like he quieted a lot of the noise from the year before. Um, made the Pro Bowl. You know, some guys dropped out and whatnot, but Pro Bowl quarterback, um, I think the craziest thing to me, what he did last year was he bared, I don't think he threw a pick in the last, I don't know what the, you know, how many games it was, but it was at least like eight, eight, nine games where he didn't throw a pick, took care of the ball. I think that's the reason why we were so successful. Um, those last 10 games, I think we went eight and two, only lost two games. And he's really, you know, he's part of the reason why we won all those games. He took care of the ball, made great decisions, um, commanded the offense um, every week, you know, his preparation really, it just it showed up and it and it paid off for us. You know, every year when the year starts, a lot of the pundits out there have the Lions winning three or four games. I think that's changed with, with the way you guys finished off the year this year. I think a lot of people are going to consider you a playoff threat next year. Do you think that you guys are really that that up and coming team right now in the NFL? Yeah, I definitely think we have a you know a legitimate shot being in the playoffs. Obviously, you know as a team. We feel like we could have made the playoffs last year. Obviously, you know some things fell short for us, but next year I feel like we want more than just a playoff, just to make the playoffs. We want to win games in the playoffs. Hopefully, you know, go to the conference championship and whatnot. But we definitely feel like we're we're easily capable of making the playoffs next year with the guys that we have on our team. You know, the draft coming up, some free agent moves that we might make. So I'm excited for it. And your head coach, Dan Campbell's got the fire. Oh, I yeah. love the videos that come out. He is like press conference. Yeah. I love it. Um, all right, let's talk about these pass catchers because we've got some incredible talent coming at us on Sunday. A.J. Brown, right. Devontae Smith, Travis Kelsey. You name the guy that's going to have the biggest game on Sunday. Who do you think it'll be? Ooh, the bi biggest game. Um, I think Kelsey's the best tight end ever, in my opinion. Uh, we're just watching him play, see what he does. The one that's going to have the biggest game, um, I'm going to go A.J. Brown. Oh, there you go. So I'm we know who you're taking to win. Man, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you started off good. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to wrap up the segment at Travis yeah, Kelsey. Thanks, a lot of No, no, no. Uh, that's awesome. I, yeah. I, the, what we're excited about to see, we always want a great game, a right. great matchup. Give us some good football to the yeah. very end, and I think right. that's what we're going to get. I but, so. um, you know, A.J. Brown's probably going to get We can't let him leave, though. Who you got? Who you taking in this one, right? I told you. Yeah, I, I got, know you I did. The Eagles. You got the Eagles. I got the Eagles. NFC, you got yep, it right NFC, there. NFC, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else you got to share with us for this week? Uh, that's it. You. Man, I'm excited. Excited to watch the game. Excited to be here. Awesome. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm Andre St. Brown joining us. Uh, Detroit Lions, you got, have a great season. Love seeing you. Thanks Thank for you. being here with us. Um, all the best as you move on to next season. Thank you so much. Up the great right. work. Appreciate it. All right, let's move on here on FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. We're back with more fun Super Bowl bets after a quick break. 
Welcome back to More Ways to Win. And yes, we're getting you ready for Super Bowl 57, but we're also getting you prepped for the kick of destiny coming at you live in the third quarter of the Super Bowl on Sunday. Gronk himself is kicking the kick of destiny in that third quarter. You can get a share of $10 million in bonus bets. So guys, I got to bring you into this one. We've been talking about it for weeks now. Gronk is going to kick the kick from 25 yards out. You guys could make that kick? No. No. I'm not, making. Not in that situation uh, with all eyes on me, James. Too much they, pressure. They man. got the fan experience yeah. here. We could go try it ourselves. Right, we we got go a try few days it, left. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to try to kick it as hard as I can, and it's going to go wide right. But it's this right. is live. <laughs> the <laughs> pressure is going to be insane. <laughs> yep. But he'll make yeah. it. Uh, he definitely ain't making it. He's making it. Definitely not. No, he's going to shank it. I got more confidence. <laughs> I have a lot of confidence, too. Uh, hey, we have confidence in you to join us the rest of the week as well. We're going to be here in Phoenix all week long leading up to Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, we're going to take you there, and, and we're going to tell you how to bet it. It's the Chiefs, it's the Eagles, it's you, and it's us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.